Coach Wackenheim, thanks for joining us for what has truly been a, a different spring for all of us. I uh, hope you've been staying safe, your family staying safe, as well as the, the players and the staff. And before we talk about VMI football and the, the program and the weeks ahead and moving forward to next season with uh, everything uh, you've had to deal with, uh, I'd like to revisit 2019 and that great season. A lot to be proud about uh, with VMI football. Most wins since 2003, most conference wins in 40 years, and bringing the Silver Shaco back. Uh, what are the most memorable moments that stand out uh, in your mind and you always carry forward? Uh, the first and foremost is uh, the win over Citadel in Charleston. Uh, the great execution on that third down play at the end of the game, uh, Reese to Jake. Uh, to put the game away and then you know the awesome effort that our defense have had uh, holding Citadel an option team to under 100 yards rushing those two things are very memorable uh, I like the way we started the season with the first victory over Mars Hill here our defense had five takeaways and our offense really went out and and dominated the day uh, the first overtime win of the season the ETSU win uh, hitting Javion Laura on that touchdown uh, going in there and, and winning the game was it was just a huge memory for me, as well as the overtime win here against Sanford, uh, watching Grant Clemens uh, <laughs> drill that kick in regulation. And then, you know, the first play, the handoff to Alex Ramsey uh, for the touchdown, and then their fourth down attempt to try and tie the game, the re double reverse pass. The ball seemed to float in the air for eight hours and incomplete. Uh, so those things uh, I remember uh, highly about the game. And then the last thing that I'll, I'll t talk about now is uh, the Tennessee Chattanooga game, I thought, really showed how our team came together to to win that game uh, without playing our best offensively, but playing our best defensively. And our special teams were outstanding in that ball game with everything that was going on. Senior day, Thanksgiving, furlough, ring figure. Our kids came out and just played outstanding football. So those are the memories that uh, I'll cherish and remember, plus many more. Well, now looking forward, how have you managed to, to run this program with the absence of spring football? And what impact would the lack of spring football have going into preseason camp? And what can a head coach do to try to compensate for this situation? I think it's a great question, Wade. But number one, you got to stay uh, true to your mission statement, which for us is 10 toes down. So for us, when we think about that, we want to be alert, be watchful. We want to stand firm. We want to be strong, we want to act like men, and we want to do everything in love. And I think if you do all that, you're going to be prepared for going on. As a head coach, I think it's very important to maintain the vision of the program uh, moving forward. And, and our vision for this year is unfinished business. We think we got some unfinished business to take care of. We're going after the SOCON championship. And we really had an unbelievable off season as we were preparing to do so. It was by far the best leadership our team had shown in the weight room. And they, they have bought into our mission in uh, the 2020 season. But you got to keep encouraging one another. Um, I think leadership is a couple things, encouraging yourself, encouraging one another. And then we also got to hold each other accountable. But I, I'm convinced there's no team better suited to handle this uh, sep time of separation than the VMI key debts. We, we're built for adversity. How have you been able to conduct your recruiting? You've, you've had to go about it a little bit differently. Of course, everyone has as well, but you're following up a great uh, signing class. Uh, how many freshmen do you expect to bring into camp this year? We expect to bring uh, 37 freshmen into camp, uh, 22 to 23 scholarship young men, uh, 14 uh, preferred walk-ons. We have 22 signed. Or we have another young man that we're working on and should know something in the next couple days. But uh, we maintain recruiting uh, through all the legal ways the NCAA allows it. Uh, social media, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram are great tools when used correctly to promote your product. And we've gone out of our way to provide virtual tour, tours to young men that would normally be visiting post uh, during spring practice. Uh, we're allowed to call our signees on the phone. Uh, if the young men that we're recruiting in next year's class, a class of 21, they have to call us, but we are allowed to text and, and direct message. And uh, we've been very uh, active doing so. Uh, we take our times in the morning and do football. Uh, we have a Zoom uh, staff meeting on Monday and Thursday. Uh, the offensive side will get together and have a Zoom meeting uh, for a little bit every day in the morning, the defensive side as well. And then in the afternoon, we do recruiting. And then based on our players' academic schedule, we have uh, meetings with them via the Zoom app, and the uh, NCAA and the Southern Conference has allowed us up to four hours a week to do that. 
All right, Coach, now looking ahead to, to next year and the opening of preseason camp, what do you see uh, as uh, VMI football's best strengths and what areas uh, need to be addressed and resolved on the depth chart in preseason camp? Well, thankfully, uh, our staff is together, which I think that's a strength, uh, most of our staff returning. I also think, you know, having a starting quarterback like Reese Udinsky coming back is a huge, huge strength. Uh, I like Jake Harris, a proven receiver. I like Leroy Thomas when he gets healthy, another proven receiver. I like that four out of five of our starting offensive line uh, come back, uh, Brad Davis, Shane Strand, uh, Marshall Gill, and Nick Hartnett. I think they're definitely competitive SOCON offensive line. Defensively, I like the depth on our defensive line. I really like our starting uh, two safeties, uh, Ethan Calsaberry and A.J. Smith, and then Algerique Maury, I think, is going to be a force, and we're going to put him at the, the cornerback position. Uh, linebackers, we got some young guys, but they're big. I mean, you look at Carter Johnson and Stone Snyder. When we step on the field, they look like SOCON linebackers. Uh, Corey Brighty coming back, fifth in the nation in kickoff returns. He's back. Uh, we're going to have to develop a new kicker and a new punter. Both uh, We had graduation there, but we signed a young man who we feel very comfortable with, and we've got a couple preferred walk-ons that we were hoping to see compete this spring, but uh, we'll see them compete in the fall, and, and I think we'll be just fine in the kicking game. And, uh, you know, we're just looking forward to getting them back. That's, you know, the highlight of my day is 4 o'clock every day. And, you know, now 4 o'clock rolls and there's no players walking in the door. So, uh, you know, I'm just looking forward to getting them all back here on post. Speaking of the coaching staff, as you said, a lot of co continuity uh, between uh, this year and last year. And, uh, but you do have some new faces. Uh, talk about the new additions and how they met. Yeah, what, what a blessing uh, to have just to replace really one staff member, although we have two new uh, members of our staff. Uh, you know, Brian Shepard left for an opportunity that he couldn't pass up. And so you had the next coordinator right here, Billy Kosh, who I'm really excited about. You know, Billy's dad was a coach. Dilly, Billy played quarterback in high school and, and college, and he's worked at a, for a lot of really, really good coaches who I respect. And I'm excited about our offense. We're sticking with the air raid style. And, you know, Billy won't like this, but I've nicknamed uh, our offense Billy Ball. So, you know, but I'm, I'm excited about that. You know, Billy brought in as a volunteer assistant coach uh, with him, Adam Lovin, who worked with him at Indiana. And then we have a full-time wide receivers coach, uh, Patrick Ashford. Patrick was a quarterback at the University of Tennessee and came to us uh, from Vanderbilt. Uh, really has a great knowledge of the game, uh, was a quarterback, so, you know, similar to that, he'll work with our receivers and uh, has a lot of positive energy. So, you know, we're hitting the ground running as soon as we go.